back to medieval history. Um, so we're learning about the history of the Middle Ages, right? So with our history so far, we've been studying uh, just a particular area of the map, which includes mostly Europe, a little bit of Africa, and a little bit of Asia, right? So today we're going to be studying something way different. We're going to move much further east. And uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So today, let's start with a review. So this is our review of chapter three in our book, The Story of the World. And let's just do a quick review. Who was the leader of the Christian church in the city of Rome? Yes, the Pope. Yes, he was called a Pope. Okay, let's see. Who was sent to Britain to tell people about Christianity, Luke? Augustine. Augustine. Was his name Augustine of Hippo? No. 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 Augustine of Canterbury. Yes, later he became known as Augustine of Canterbury. Why? Because. Why Canterbury? Because he was from Canterbury. I mean, he went yeah. to Canterbury. Yeah. Yeah, he went to Canterbury. So when he arrived at England, mm -hmm. um, the king let him stay in Canterbury. That's right. So the king actually let him stay in Canterbury, and that's where he set up the first place where he taught from. Uh, what's something that the uh, monks taught the Anglo-Saxons how to do? What did they teach them how to do? Do you remember, Josiah? They taught them how to write and read. Exactly. They read taught them how to write and read, read and write. So that was a very important thing that they did. And they taught them about... Christianity, exactly right. Good. So, what was the uh, name of the place where the monks lived and uh, worshipped God? Is it Ellie? The monastery. Yeah, they lived in monasteries, and they actually built monasteries all around England at that time, and they were spreading the gospel. Remember how we talked about many, many people turned to Jesus during that time, so it was a really exciting time for them. And... Let's see, is there still an Archbishop of Canterbury today? Yes. yes. Yes, there is. Actually, in the Anglican Church, the Church of England, they still have an Archbishop of Canterbury, and he, his uh, main place is in a city called Canterbury. <laughs> still today, right? Okay, that's uh, one of the places. So, um, how did uh, monks make books during this time? Oh, yeah, Luke, I'm oh, sorry. They wrote down. They did what? They wrote down. They... Copy them. copy them, right? They copy them by hand. Uh, what was the name of the place where they copied these books? Yeah, Ellie? Scriptorium. Scriptorium, that's right. They make it in a scriptorium. And uh, did they write just plain black and white writing all the time? No, Jane, no. what kind of writing did they do? Uh, sometimes they leafed it, mm -hmm. or at least it's called leafing, with yep. gold. So they pounded gold or silver and then they just put it on the letter. Excellent, yes. So they did many things to make it look very beautiful, including adding gold leaf. Okay, did the monks just stay in their monastery and stay away from people? No, no. They, no. they helped people. They did help people. What are some ways that they helped people? They gave yeah. them meals. Mm -hmm. they, they fed them, yeah. They fed them and they, they helped them. What if somebody was sick? They healed them. Yeah, they would help them. To, they acted like doctors. Uh, they actually fed them. And they taught them, like we already talked about, how to read and write. So monks did a lot of interesting things. Okay, now chapter 4 was about the Byzantine Empire. And uh, what was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, Luke? Constantinople. Constantinople, that's right. And what was this? We talked about the, the uh, emperor. What was the name of the emperor we talked about? Who was he? Justinian. Justinian. And what's some, some important things about Justinian? Can someone name something? He's yeah, very just. He was just. Why, why did they call him just? Because what did he write? He, made, he wrote the Justinian Code. Yeah, the Justinian Code. He wrote he a bunch of laws. He wrote a lot of laws to make sure that the law was the same all throughout his empire. So, very important thing that Justinian did. And does anyone remember, what was Justinian's wife's name? Theodora. Theodora. Yes, it was Theodora. I was going to ask Allie that one. So, Theodora. Uh, was Justinian's wife, and she helped him a lot. She was a great advisor to him and uh, did many things. She yeah. used to be a circus clown. Exactly. She used to be a circus clown. Okay, you guys are right on. So now we understood that. Uh, let's see where we are in history. So we're going to start over here in history with this line. This is 1 AD. 
What happened basically 180, around 180? Uh, exactly. So that's how we make our timelines, starting from when Jesus was born. So before is BC, after is AD. So we've been going along, uh, talking about the church, and we talked about how Diocletian divided the empire. And now, we actually went all the way down here, didn't we? We went down here and we talked a little bit about Benedict and monasticism, which uh, Benedict himself actually came around 529. And uh, Augustine of Canterbury was in the late 500s, so just after this, uh, kind of in this area was when Augustine of Canterbury was. But we're going to um, jump back a bit into time to start something in a very different part of the world. And so this is actually from chapter number five in your book. You haven't read it. Chapter five. And this is actually, basically, we'll call it India's Gupta Dynasty. Dynasty, Dynasty. right. Dynasty, India's Gupta Dynasty. India's Gupta Dynasty. And that actually began, it was a name. I don't know a lot more about it, but it was a name. Uh, so 320 is when it got started, India's Gupta dynasty. That looks too much, too, too long from, too, only about two years. Well, let's see, from 529 to 320, that's how many years is that? Two that, years. Like, that's about 200 years. Yeah, more than 200 years, right? 200, <laughs> more than 200 years, 209 years. So we're jumping back a little bit to start India's Gupta dynasty because we're going to a very different part of the world. So if you look at the map on the screen, this is today's map of what's this continent called? The Europe. 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 What's this continent down here? Africa. Africa. And over here we've got Asia. 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 Now we're going to continue going to the east. Which way is east? That way. That way. Yes, that way. That way. Yes. Okay. Go, looking to the right on most maps, if they have north facing up, you're going to go east. So let's go east on a map. We're going to fly across Turkey. We're going to fly across Iran, which is where the Persian Empire was centered, and Iraq. Turkmenistan. What's Turkmenistan today? Afghanistan today. What's today? Pakistan. And down into India. So we're going to talk about India's Gupta dynasty. And this is a map. Well, this is a map uh, from that time, or showing that time. <laughs> and uh, it shows in orange is the area that was the Gupta dynasty. Okay, you can see how much it covered. This part with the, with the orange and the yellow stripes shows more of some other areas that they had influence in. But their main area was in northern India. And their capital was right here, a place called Pataliputra. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly, but... We'll have to look that up. Okay, so just a few things about India. Do you think that uh, India had Christians? No. no. No, yes. Yes. Well, the old church tradition says that in the year 52, the Apostle Thomas brought Christianity to India. And he was, is said to have died there as a martyr. In the late 100s, a Roman historian, a guy named Eusebius, he went to India. And you know what he found there? What? Christianity. Christians. Yeah, he found Christians in India during the late 100s. So that was all the way back here at this time. Okay, so pretty early on, it seems that there was, there was some Christian influence into India. And uh, they had a church called the Martham Church planted there in the first century. But there was a bit of a problem for Christians um, in India, just as there was a problem in other areas of the world. Remember in the Roman Empire, at first, did they like Christians? No, not at first. It wasn't until Constantine legalized Christianity, and we saw that here in 313. At that time, it became okay for Christians. And in fact, Constantine himself uh, said it was okay. And He's so, a Christian. Yes, yeah, so many, many emperors actually were Christian after that. Well, for the Christians in India, they had trouble because the, the, the native religion there, does anyone know what the native religion in India is called? It's a very big religion. Um, you see lots of statues. Uh, yeah. Buddhism? Is uh, uh, Allah? Wait. 
Not, is, not yet. Not yet. Is lost. Okay, there are two main religions, <gasps> beginning lost. with Hinduism. 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 Okay, yes. So in India, there was something called Hinduism, right? Hinduism. Yeah, Luke, you have a question? And Buddhism. Exactly. And another one that came a little bit later, came later, is Buddhism. Okay, so in India, we had these two religions, Hinduism and Buddhism. And especially the Hindus, they did not like the Christians. Because the Christians insisted on worshipping how many gods? One. Only one. The Hindus, how many gods did they have? I don't know. Many, 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 many gods. And something that was very important for the Hindus was something called a... Human sacrifice? No. Well, there's some of that. We uh, Something called a caste, caste system. system. There was a... Well, not exactly. We'll talk more about that later. But um, they had something called a caste system. A caste is basically levels in a society oh, that's where some people that's are at the top. Korea has that. And then some Korea, people well, are at the Korea bottom. Had that. Yeah, that's oh, in really? that's, it's think, happened in other countries. Treat the lower yep. ones. Um, Bad. What happened was I don't know, I think I like two days ago we were talking about that. Oh yeah, you were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. and and the high the higher ones mm -hmm. treat the lower ones really bad. Yeah. Yeah, the that can happen. Season. So the uh, Hindus who were in the upper castes, they did not like the Christians because the Christians said that everybody was in the image of God. Everybody was equal. And so they were not so happy with this. So they made it difficult for the Christians who were in India. And uh, that, that happens quite often. When you have two religions that come what together, there's going to be problems. Now, Buddhism is something that happened a little bit later. And it was actually uh, a man uh, who they later called the Buddha. He was a very rich man. But he decided that his life wasn't, it just seemed like, where, where was the meaning in his life? Is this really the way life is? So he actually went off and became uh, what's called an ascetic. He gave up all of his, the money, he gave up all the rich things, and he went to try to find meaning. And uh, there's a long history of Buddhism, but uh, he, his philosophy was basically that this world is an illusion. It's not real. It's something we're trying to escape. And he talked about all the suffering that goes on in life. So the Buddha came up with lots of ideas, and he taught many people. And this, but, didn't he, but don't they worship Buddha? It's a statue? Yeah, later, um, what, that did happen, Josiah. You're correct that they also started bringing in other parts of other gods and religions. They have many statues of Buddha, and many people actually worship Buddha himself, although he said that he was not a god. And he didn't, there's actually, in pure Buddhism, there would be no god, basically. But uh, we'll, it's a lot to get into, so we won't talk too much about how that works. But So in India, there was Hinduism and Buddhism. And also, there were some Christians early on. And does uh, India have Christians today? Yeah. Of course, there are Christians in, in India. Okay. <clears throat> so, you have a map uh, that I've given you, and I'm going to give you, actually, it's right here. So, please pass this map around. And this has some things on it I want you to see. This is more detailed. Yep, so this one gives you a little detail, and it shows some areas of the Gupta Empire. Um, let me ask you this question. What is a dynasty? Oh. Yeah, Luke? family who rules over. Yes, good. It's a family who rules for a long period of time. Okay, so it's a family who rules for a long period of time. So the father passes it on to the son, who passes it on to the son. So what if they don't things. have a son? If they don't have a son, there have been, that has been a question. There's been times where in some cultures they pass it to a daughter, if they have a daughter, in some cultures. Uh, in other cultures, of course, a dynasty, uh, if they don't have a son, they might adopt a son. Uh, and bring him into the family. So, how does the how does the dy dynasty end? Mm, the dynasty usually ends when another group destroys that family. Ooh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it it has happened in the past many times. So the Gupta dynasty started at this time period, about 320 A.D., and it lasted all the way to 550 A.D. And that's why we're talking about it now. It went all the way up here to 550. AD. So it was a long dynasty lasting for 230 years, about 230 years of the Gupta dynasty. Um, this time, uh, actually, we have what they call the Golden Age of India. 
Golden age of India. What, does a golden age sound like a good time or a bad time? Good. Good. Yeah, it's a good time. A lot of uh, really amazing things happened during this time period. So the Gupta dynasty actually united a lot of smaller kingdoms into one big kingdom across most of northern India. Uh, look at your map for a minute there, and you'll see two important rivers on the map. Can anyone I'm, tell me the rivers? Yes. Arabian Sea, so oh, Bay of Bengal. Okay, those are, that's the sea well, and the bay over there. But what are the rivers in the north of uh, India? Indus and Ganges? Yeah, the Indus River is on the west side, and the Ganges River is on the east and north side. You can see these rivers here. There's, There's also rivers. another river, river that's kind of in the middle, Narmada River, so that's in there also. But... What do you think, also, to look at India's geography, what's the north of India? What's this up here? Tur the Himalayan. The Himalayan mountains. So basically, the Gupta Empire stretched all the way to the Himalayas, over to the Indus River, and it went along the Ganges River. And I told you the capital of the Gupta Empire was the Pataliputra, right there. So a few other things about uh, the Gupta. Yes, Ali. Where is the rivers on our map? Is it the dotted line? Yeah, the rivers are the solid lines here. It says Indus. See these solid little branches? Those are the uh, rivers. Okay. The Ganges is a very important river in India uh, still today. And let me show you. Uh, I have a picture of the Ganges River and what it looks like today. And let's see. So what was that? Don't do that. You're not supposed to. Hmm. Anyways, uh, well, I'll show you that picture a little bit later on. Uh, the Ganges River is still very important today, especially in the Hindu religion. Okay, so a few things about the uh, Gupta dynasty. The first king was a guy named Chandra Gupta the first. Chandra Gupta. Chandra Gupta. The first. Okay, so Chandra Gupta. The Gupta family destroyed another family. Dynasty? Well, basically, the Gupta family, they brought a bunch of other families together. And they made this dynasty. Okay? They united a lot of smaller kingdoms. So, like I said, this is often called the Golden Age of India. So you can write that down, too, if you want. The Golden Age of India. Okay. So something happened to this dynasty, though, in the year 458, 458, which is happening right about here on our timeline. The Gupta Empire was, like the Romans, destroyed? divided, invaded <laughs> at this point. Later it was destroyed. But at this time it was invaded by some people who in their literature they called the Hunas. The Hunas. Uh, it sounds like humans. Which we usually call the Huns. Huns. Yeah. Okay, the have you heard of the Huns here? before? Well, is yep. And where is this a where is this area? Asia. Yeah. So the Huns actually invaded over from this area, and they came into the Gupta Empire and caused them a lot of trouble. But there was a king at this time who was known as Skanda Gupta. And Skandagupta led his people to defeat the Huns. And he lost. He did. He did not lose. He actually won that battle. However, it caused so much damage that the Golden Age of India was over. <laughs> and what happens when a Golden Age ends? Trouble. There's trouble. The country gets poorer and weaker, and many other things occur. But I just want to point out that uh, this time period in India, there was a lot of uh, great culture, a lot of artistic works, a lot of things happened. Uh, the Indian culture for a long time has had a form of writing called Sanskrit, and I'll show you what that looks like. People seen a picture of Sanskrit. There's a picture of some oh. Sanskrit. You can see at the, the top here and in the middle. Mm, this is just uh, not the best. <laughs> resolution picture, but you can see that is a, a sample of Sanskrit and what it looks like. So very ancient language and writing system that they had. Oh, and here we go. This is what I was talking about. This is the Ganges River, the way it looks today. 
Yeah, one of the uh, the things in Hinduism, they they bathe in the Ganges River. That's so, uh, an important ritual. Well, it's very likely that in places it is, and uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of people going in there. So anyway, but they get dirty. Well, it's possible. So they go in there to bathe in the Wait, Ganges. Is there a woman as part who's of their. It? Very possibly. Do you think you will want to drink it? No. No. <laughs> well, to some, it's considered a holy river. Yes. Oh, um, about. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. So um, let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> so this is just a, what it looks like today. Wait, do people still have Hinduism? Yeah, yeah good question. You guys think Hinduism is still around? Yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, Hinduism is around, and uh, they are said to have millions of gods. There's all kinds of beautiful art around India that's related to Hinduism. How are they supposed to even worship all of the gods once yeah. <laughs> in a day? That's a good question. Good question. But there's many different gods in Hinduism, and they have had some beautiful art. But, of course, these uh, things are idols there that they've created. Um, so that's part of the uh, a big part of India still today. Now let's move on to another topic, and this is about some monks. Monks. Remember we talked about uh, the monks in England? They lived where? They lived in monasteries. Well, the monks in India, we're going to talk about the Buddhist monks. They didn't have monasteries originally. What are Buddhist monks? They are, it's in a way, there's many similarities between what we call monks in Christianity and monks in Buddhism, not in what they believe, but in the way they live. Uh, Buddhist monks, like Christian monks, are very devoted to their beliefs. They devote their entire life to studying them and to living it out in the way that they believe is correct. Uh, they live together in groups and uh, so perform many rituals. So in that way, it's similar. Hmm? Are you usually monks Christian? Well, monk is a term it that we use for, for people who devote their lives entirely to the religion and they usually live apart from others and in groups. Um, so the word monk doesn't necessarily mean Christian and it doesn't necessarily mean Buddhist or any other particular religion. But um, well, are you the monks that we were talking about last time? The monks we talked about last time were definitely Christian monks. Um, there were other religions that were happening in England at that time. Uh, of course, the, the pagan religion we talked about with the Anglo-Saxons, and they had some different people involved with that. The earlier Celtic religion had people called Druids, which would live in a similar way. But we talked about those who were mostly following Benedict's law, Benedict's rule, I should say, and uh, they were Christian monks. But the ones we're talking about today are Buddhist monks. Now, the Buddhist monks followed the teachings of the Buddha, and some of them lived in caves. Yeah. Would you like to live in a cave? No. No. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't sound so nice, does it? Yes. Not really. Well, we're going to talk about some very specific caves that they had called the Ajanta Caves. Now, these, if you look at your map, you can see, see, see the, the Ajanta Caves. caves. They're it. just below that dotted line for the Gupta dynasty. So these monks lived in these caves. But and they created them by, in a pretty interesting way. They created them? Yes, they, they actually made caves. They had a way of creating cracks in all the cliffs that were around that area. And they did this by digging trenches in the cliff, like a trench, and they put a log inside the trench. Then they got the log really wet. What does wood do when it gets soaked with water? It breaks. It expands. So eventually, as the log expanded, it made cracks in the cliff, in the cliff, and it allowed the monks to then chip away at it and actually create doesn't, a cave. Doesn't the log break? Because I feel like rock hmm. is stronger than wood. Not in this case. In this case, the log actually expanded and made these cracks. the the uh, The cliffs were not made of ex granite or anything extremely hard, but uh, so that's how they made their caves. And inside the caves, they did a lot of art. Let me show you some pictures of the art that they did. Oh, did they do, like, they, they get ink in their hands and then they write stuff on 
I'll show you just some examples. Let's look at the screen. And this is the outside of some of the Ajanta caves. You can see wow. the, this, sorry, this picture is a little pixelated, but <laughs> you can see that they actually carve these caves into the side of the cliff. Wow, how do they do that? Yeah, they use, remember they used the logs? It looks logs. like jail cells to me. Yeah, yeah. it kind of does. And here's another picture of the Ajanta Caves. Uh, it doesn't show up so well on this screen, but you can see there's a walking area. You can see people visiting them. That's on the outside I also. I don't like people visiting. Well, this is today. They're actually visiting today. And uh, this is what the inside of the cave looks like. Wow. wow. Let me just make this bigger. Whoa, how did they live in there? That doesn't look like a cave. I know it doesn't. It looks That's like a, a cathedral, like doesn't it? Zeus. Yeah, well, they, they carved their statues, their idols inside. They, they carved out these areas for prayer time. They had their own prayers that they would do and rituals. And they made some really beautiful well, what about works the monks inside. Are they don't make idols. They, make, they don't make idols. No, Christian monks would not do that, no. Okay, so. Do they have a scriptorium? They also, they made sculptures inside the Ajanta Caves. You can see how they carved these onto the wall. These are mostly sculptures of the Buddha, because they were Buddhist monks. And uh, that was something else they did. Is it kind of like a museum now? Yeah, it is. It's protected by the Indian government today. But these caves were lost for a long time. Up to, from this, the year that they started making them, up until about 660, the monks kind of moved out of the caves. Oh. And the caves were forgotten. They were grown over, things were grown, they forgot what, that they were there. It wasn't until British soldiers were later in India, and they were hunting tigers. Can you imagine hunting tigers? You're out there. And the British soldiers discovered these caves, and they went inside, they're like, wow, look at all this art, these amazing things. The sculptures, and they had frescoes. And let's take a look at the frescoes. What's a fresco, you guys know? No. no. A fresco is a kind of painting that's painted on wet plaster. And this is an example of a fresco. They put the wet plaster onto the wall and they paint before it dries. When it dries, it preserves the paint like this. Well, what you're looking at now is today. And you can see how it's worn away after many, many years. Um, when the soldiers found the paintings, they were actually still very bright and colorful. However, after many visitors came in over the years and touched it, and actually some chipped away, some people chipped away at it to take pieces to museums. This is what's left. But like I said, later the Indian that government came in and they protected stuff. them. That's right, yep. So later uh, the Indian government has protected it by putting them behind screens so people can't do that anymore. But yeah, a lot of uh, beautiful art that they had. Here's another one. Is this one chipped away at? Yes. This is another example. Yes, it is. So it's, uh, you know, just with time, but also people no, touching it clear. and this things. More clear. Yeah, so that's an example of a fresco inside these Ajanta caves. Why do they put wet plaster? That was the way that they painted. And uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, we had looked at that one already. Okay, great. So these were the Ajanta caves, and uh, they were rediscovered by these British soldiers who were out hunting tigers. Okay, so we just gave a little bit of uh, information about India during this time period, just so we remember that not everything was happening in Europe. And not, so we wanted to focus on another part of the world, or what was happening over in India between, what was the time period the Gupta dynasty started? Uh, uh, 320. 320 AD, right? So this is all AD we're talking about today. 320 AD all the way down to... 550, no, if 550. Said, if someone said 320 BC to 550 BC, it yeah. wouldn't make sense. Do you know why? Because that would be going back in time. It would be, that's right. So we have to count backwards with BC and forward with AD, don't we? Okay, any questions about the AD India's Gupta dynasty? Box. AD? Oh, yes. Well, on old dummy, it can. So, all right. So uh, that is an example of what was going on over in India. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. And for more information, please check us out at justiceprep.com.